live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lita Ada, broadcasting live here from the Ada Fruit Factory. We do all our testing, manufacturing, shipping, kitting, coding, support, etc. Uh, here in downtown Manhattan. Uh, it's a lovely night. It's quiet here. The machine line is sleeping because everyone's gone. But we're here and we're going to have one hour of fun, maker news, stories, giveaways, and more. Yeah. Excitement, videos aplenty. Mr. Lady Ada, what's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is time for USB-C. It's over, everybody. And that's what time it is. It's, it's time, time for USB-C. USB -C. It's 10% off on the Ada Fruit Store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Everything except for Adabox gift certificates and Code Academy courses. It supports us and an open source hardware company in New York City. A bunch of ladies run this company. And when you buy something, you can save some cash. And you can also support this cool independent venture free, loan free, independent open source company that's manufacturing in New York City. That's what that code's for. And these are the people it's that time. you're helping out. It's time for USB-C. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady, it'll go over those projects and more. We got some JP's workshop where we're going to show some cool previews and also some make code. So Python on hardware, news and more in the world of Python on electronics. Time travel, look around in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Got some information about some jobs, jobs board. Got some 3D printing, some main New York City factory footage. Got some new products. We answer your questions all the time, but live tonight during this hour on adafruit.it slash discord. Go over there. About 15,000 of us, 24-7, 365. We got some top secret. We'll do a trivia question where we give something away at the end of the show. All that and more on You Guessed It. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Yay. All right. So uh, first up, a little reminder, time for USB-C. It's that time. Yep. Um, it's the holidays. We'll probably be running out of stuff. So um, it's yes. a good idea to do some purchases. Also, shipping deadlines are coming up soon, too. Yes. Um, and we still have freebies going on. I think we're out of the I.O. cards. We are out of the I.O. cards. So, we have yeah, to update that graphics. So, because we ran out. Yeah. So we run out of things from time to time, but we still have CPXs and Permaprotos and free shipping. Correct. If you order $99 or more, you'll get a free Permaproto half-size breadboard. That's a favorite of all engineers. Great stocking stuffer. Uh, take your solderless breadboard project and solder it on to make it permanent. People love to use them in their projects because they're so high quality, gold-plated. At $1.99 or more, you'll get free UPS ground shipping. That's our recommended shipping, especially during the very busy holiday season. USPS yeah. tends to be a lot more variable. Uh, UPS is much more reliable during the season, so we yeah. recommend that. Um, free UPS ground shipping in the continental US at $1.99 or more. And at $2.99, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development board that has LED sensors, buttons, uh, capacitive touch, you know, can run a variety of different languages, such as Arduino, CircuitPython, MakeCode, Code.org, CS Discoveries, TinaGo, MicroLisp, MakerBlocks, and more. It's a great way to get started and also a great stock and stuffer. You can't stuff the UPS truck, though, in a stocking. Way too big. It's like, they're yeah. like 30, 40 feet long. Yeah, this is a hard photo, so we had to make giant versions of all of this because that's a real size UPS. Yeah, thing. I know. Weird. Um, Pink Street. So, UPS ground for the U.S. Recommended. Postal, I'd say you're... Risky. Got a, good, got a good chance of not getting it. Risky. By, uh, the 25th. We offer it. That's but what risky. matters. And then um, DHL International. Good. DHL good. If you are in Manhattan, check out before 11 a.m. And we have same day delivery depending on where you are at in Manhattan. Show and tell. People are in the world. Show and share on their projects. We had some amazing projects and some amazing people this week. Lady Ada, who is on the show and tell? And what did they share? I'm glad you asked. Well, we got a bunch of people from Adafruit. They got all that turkey and stuff in, and then they turned that into content and projects and code. Phil B. Turkey in, guides out. Turkey it's just, it's just like that. Um, Phil B. Paint Your Dragon updated uh, the Ooze Master 3000 guide from Halloween to make it more festive. Now it's Christmas Icicles guide. Uh, so that'll be coming out soon, but he showed a video of his yeah. front window showing these cool little icicle effects. Yeah, um, you know, just because I have it handy. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Very festive. Pretty much. There's like no snow in California, but you know, whatever. Make, uh, it, make it out of light. JP uh, showed off the hide and seek guide, which actually just went live. Using the Bluefruit radio and signal strength, uh, you can create uh, 
three or more, whatever number, hidden Circuit Playground Blue Fruits and then have a seeker. And he, that yeah. person has to go around the house and find where these hidden Circuit Playgrounds are. And then preview this too. And then look, as it gets closer, it d turns into the color that it's detecting. So this is a this is a fun little like geocaching, but without GPS. Yeah, we had some music playing in the background for that one, so. Um, oh, sorry. Like, yeah, it's alright. But yeah, as you as the 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 seeker gets closer to the uh, treasures, it turns the color of those uh, treasures, and then that way you know you're getting closer and closer. Um, Melissa showed off a demo of the Charlie Plex bonnet on Raspberry Pi. Uh, she has it displaying some numbers. That's pretty cool. Um, Noe uh, showed off this week's 3D printing project, which was a variety of different beautiful 3D printed ornaments. They're also trying out PETG as opposed to PLA, and they actually recommend it. They're using Prusament, which is like Prusa filament, and they say it's really good quality and a lot more flexible, less um, brittle. So it's recommended for snap fit connections. Katni's working on a light based project, also festive, using a circuit playground blue fruit to remotely control an LED strip that will be uh, wrapped around uh, like a festivist pole or like a wreath or some other festive thing. Drew has a, uh, had showed off uh, the badge from Supercon. It was doing a synthesizer demo based on some shift registers. Uh, and also showed off a badge from CCC um, that had, uh, like a, it's like a watch, like a cardio watch. Uh, it was a very neat badge. And uh, Drew's working on a new badge for Open Source Hardware Conference. So if you're interested in working on a new badge design that's not for DEF CON, for Open Source Hardware, uh, get in touch. Uh, Drew is on Discord, so just show up in the CircuitPython channel and just say, hey, I want to work on that badge. And y'all can team up together uh, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing more new creative badges. Lucium made a face following OpenCV project that uses, uh, like I said, uh, face tracking on OpenCV and the Uncanny Eyes project uh, that Phil B did and the eyes follow the person around and it was very uncanny, so good work. Joey came by with the open book demo. So this is an open source e-ink book and showed off all the Unicode font support, partial updates, a lot of work's being done on uh, the open book, it's looking really great. Uh, people are loving the silk screen and it's like Feather compatible. So I've loved, I'm loving seeing this project as it you know, starts and in the middle and now he's, he's getting close to the end of uh, this revision. And VCG came by, uh, he made a keyboard with a Model M a while ago using an easy key, but this time he's thought, you know what, maybe I'll use Teeny Go. So on a Feather M4, the Sam 51, you can run Teeny Go uh, which is Golang for microcontrollers, and had a really good time, you know, doing like matrix detection and then talking to Bluetooth. And it's just a very new language with the, not a lot of support yet, which means that you get to uh, define the support, I guess. So looks like it works so far. It's got a cute little debugging matrix as well, but you have a teeny go keyboard. It's the future of keyboards. Okay. All participants on show and tell get an as seen on show and tech show and tell sticker, email supportedatafruit.com, and we will send you out one. Um, a couple programming notes. We do a live show every single week. Next week, we'll have a special guest. Brandon from Particle is going to be here, and we'll be talking about particle mesh, particle hardware with machine learning, and more. So tune in to that next week at 8 p.m. And then we'll talk about this a little bit later, but for the rest of the year, there are no more 3D Hangout shows. It's only three weeks. Don't worry. It'll you'll, be okay. you'll survive. You'll It'll survive. be okay. Um, but we will get all the programming notes and more for the rest of the year for folks. We still have a couple more guides coming out. We've got a lot but, going on. But, uh, yeah, just you'll have to uh, stream amongst yourselves. Jump Park Show is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So please check that out. A couple previews. Um, we already showed the moving around the hide-and-seek thing. And here is the Apple notification service. This will be what JP is showing tomorrow. And probably more. So that is um, wireless, it's Bluetooth, and it's showing things that are coming directly off JP's phone. And so basically you can make your own Apple Watch now. Neat. Um, last week, JP was off because it was Thanksgiving. So we had uh, no show. However, yeah. I'm going to show the MakeCode um, video that he did for uh, Arcade. So we usually have a MakeCode Arcade. Uh, game of the week that yeah. JP does. 
And it's timely because we just released a bunch of gift guides. Mm. And part of our gift guides is all the cool things that work with Make Code Arcade. So I thought we would do a Make Code Arcade Game of the Week. Take it away, JP. So this is a really uh, fantastic platformer uh, created by Dragon Mountain Design. It's called Turtle Monkey Trouble. Uh, and one thing that I love about it is that he designed and 3D printed his main character for this game. So that is Turtle Monkey. And Turtle Monkey is trouble. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at uh, the game itself. Here it is. Uh, let me get my keys straight. So, oh no, your friends have been captured and are locked up somewhere in the jungle. You've got to rescue them. But watch out for enemies and traps. Jump on the top to defeat them. Also, fire is very bad. Yes. All right, look at this. Look at this little turtle monkey. He's a monkey, he's a turtle. He's a monkey, he's a turtle, monkey, turtle. And I can jump on this crab's head. Ha, take that crab. So I'm so impressed. Can you believe the quality of these games that we can create? Oh, don't die. Uh, using Make Code Arcade. And I'm sure this is a really fun one to play on a handheld as well. Now, uh, Dragon Mountain Design said this is a beta. So uh, there are probably still some unfinished bits to it. Uh, and I'm not gonna go into uh, how the game works, but I'll say two things. One, if we zoom out here, we can see the number of blocks. It's big, but it's not terrifying. And this is a pretty gettable game, so it might be a good example game to look at. And also, Dragon Mountain Design mentioned that he uh, learned a lot about making this type of 2D platformer from the Make Code Arcade or the Make Code team's YouTube channel. They have a tutorial series on making 2D platformers. So I recommend you go check that out if you like the looks of this kind of game or if you like the looks of Turtle Monkey Trouble, which is my game of the week pick. How about that? How about that, Scott? What do you think of that? Scott and Todd have disappeared. Cool. <laughs> and let's make Code Arcade. Yes. Game of the Week. All right, so tune in JP Show tomorrow for more. We can learn how to make all this stuff and then some. All right, it is Python on hardware. Yay, I'm wearing the shirt. Yeah. I'm ready. All right, a few things. Um, we'll play this full video later, but we got MP3s going on. Circuit Python devices. Very so cool. This just means you're going to be able to do a lot of cool projects. Yes, we had Wave playback, which is great, but Waves are kind of big. So now we have support for compressed MP3 format because MP3 is out of patent, yeah. uh, which means that we can now ship software or hardware with MP3 decoding on it. We've got it only will work on the larger boards like the M4 or the NRF52, like the more chunky boards, not the M0 series. And you can play up to two MP3s concurrently. FOMU. Want Python in your USB port? Of course you do. Try the beta of CircuitPython for FOMU, full USB support, thanks to the new uh, USB port port and the awesome tiny USB library binaries and instructions are on GitHub. And uh, you can also read some of the story about a profiler. Yeah, this is an FPGA, I think, running Risk Five. It's emulating, it's basically a Risk Five processor that's then loading CircuitPython on it, I think. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And it fits in a USB port, like Good. inside. Uh, TinyUSB now supports the NXP IMXRT, Cortex-M7, including the RT-1010, RT-1015, RT-1020, RT-1050, RT-1060, and RT-1064. There mm. are over 300 stars and 70 forks of this. TinyUSB is helping everyone getting USB onto their hardware, and that's usually the first step doing circuit by And phone. you get all the stuff, you get mass storage, CDC, HID, yeah. more stuff coming down the pipe. Speaking of, mm. what's Feather, this? The Feather family takes flight with Feather and Circuit Python on the NXP IMX RT. This is from Arturo, mm. and this is something we're gonna be working Two for flavors. on this. You can do USB C. Yeah. You can do type of RT and yeah this is the 1010 and this is the 1062 yeah. so the 1010 is a lower cost one uh, but it's available in a QFP not BGA and then this is the BGA version which is of course ton more pin but you see that extra mezzanine connector that has like full TFT controller out it has like a megabyte of RAM it's bonkers yeah whereas the 1010 is a little bit simpler like it doesn't have as many pins but uh, he stuck a ESP32 on the end there so you can do wireless and Bluetooth yeah, so we mentioned this before, working on 
a NXP um, Arduino shaped thing. We're working on an NXP Feather one. We're going to try to team up with Arturo. So um, this is good to see because this is where we think it's heading. People will do stuff with tiny USB. They'll use the Feather format and then they'll get Circuit Python going and they'll do it fast. And that's the thing that's really important. You can do all this development really fast. And speaking of fast, um, these are some previews um, from Scott of the things that he showed last week, not only on the show and tell, but also on the tweets. Um, this was um, showing live messages off an uh, iPhone that goes over to a Bluetooth device using CircuitPython BLE. Um, Brian Station is working on a lot of stuff. Um, we put this in our newsletter every week. This is all his Oshpark orders. Yeah. <laughs> it's not actually, it's just, it's looping. It's not an infinite scroll. No, it's actually infinite. Well, it is. Yeah, okay. It's a four by four. Actually, one of these boards I put together, I'm going to show it off yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, lots of cool games that people are developing with CircuitPython. This one is uh, Blink is Breakout. It's a CircuitPython implementation of a game that's similar to the classic Atari game Chips Challenge. This is by uh, Foamy Guy. Neat. This um, connects up to look at the RSS feed on um, the Amazon AWS reInvent conference, and then it would keep track of the number of announcements. This is the Pi badge. So not only is it a conference badge, it shows your name. It can basically live stream in what's going on at the conference. Um, this is some 3D printed cases at Hackaday Supercon. Um, thanks to DigiKey and I guess us, we had a bunch of uh, Pi badges, edge badges at Supercon, and so people were able to instantly, quickly do something cool with it, and now they're making cool accessories for their badges and more. Um, this one I think is going to be a guide or is a guide. Coming soon. Yeah, this is a um, Pi Portal smart switch that uses Adafruit IO, and if then this that turns on and off the light with voice command using Alexa or Google Assistant. Um, this is always neat. So Cedar Grove is like constantly making these He's like really cranking cool. out these feathers. Yeah, this is a Stemma host feather wing, and then this is the Stemma wing backpack. And you can check these out on Hackaday IO. But um, the feather wing attaches to the feather wing board, provides stem or stomach QT interface, and the other one is a backpack that adds standalone stem interface for a non microcontroller feather wing, like a uh, I squared C or two C and LED display. Um, there are three Circuit Python lectures. There's probably more by now. Um, this is from Korea, and they're showing all of. And if you speak Korean, listen Korean, you can understand it. That's good um, because that's the language they're in. And this is all about. Python, Blinka, Blinka runs on Raspberry Pi. Tune into that. Um, here's another good example. This is what I was talking about before. Um, folks are quickly making badges and prototype hardware, and they're tossing CircuitPython on it. So, this is so cute looking. Yeah, this is a cute little badge. Um, this is the CC Coven badge. It runs CircuitPython, and uh, in our newsletter, we have a link if you want to buy one and help support the maker for that. Uh, this is a, the Feather Snow. It's an easy way to unlock your programming creativity with CircuitPython. It's a snowflake, and you just plug it in, and you're doing Python, and they can control the snowflakes. Um, lots of new boards over on circuitpython.org slash downloads and slash Blinka, so check all of those out. We also um, featured the book. We have this in the store. This is from Japan. This is CircuitPython and Moo. But one of the things about the CircuitPython book um, that I thought was neat is there's a page of why is it called Moo? And the author, uh, Nicholas, is very thoughtful. And, and like he said, he has many layers of why he comes up with things. Um, Moo sounds like Moo. Kids like saying that. Um, Greek Moo symbol is for micro. Moo is a micro editor for micro things. Modern pronunciation of Moo is me. So the, both the, so the website is code with me. And uh, does the editor have a boot in nature? In Moo. Symbol? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, over on the Dropbox blog, you can uh, read this cool article. It's about the creator of Python and how Python makes thinking and code easier. The PyCon, PyCon Africa videos are posted. We posted all of those up, and they're in our newsletter. And if you're looking for a good gift this year, these are Python earrings. Cute. You, you can stop over at their Etsy store, and it's the uh, just search for Python programming language, and you'll stay on Etsy and this will look for the earrings. Yeah. yeah. That's Python hardware news. Yay! Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right. So moving right along, yep. Um, we have some time travel. Get in the time machine. In the time machine, there is a new Circuit Playground episode. So we have Circuit Playground as hardware. We have Circuit Playground as a kid show, and this one is S's for soldering, hot off the press, world premiere. Hot off the iron, starring me. I'm in it. You and uh, Hans, Ruby, Hans, and Mo. Ruby and Mo. Yeah. And so. Uh, Take it away. Okay. Behold. 
behold, the almighty soldering iron. It fuses metal. Combines conductors. So powerful. <sighs> Excuse what? me, what? I'm just oh. coming in here, I'm gonna do she? some soldering. What? Did she just, oh my oh. gosh, she just turned, she just picked it up! Like the sword from the stone. She is the chosen one. You guys, a soldering iron isn't magic, but it is pretty powerful. It uses the power of heat to bond components together with material called solder. Well, it must use a lot of heating power then. That's right, Ruby. This soldering iron uses 65 watts of power, and with great power comes great responsibility. And what exactly does that mean? It means that you have to be very careful when soldering and follow a few simple rules. What sort of rules? For starters, soldering irons are not toys. They're specialized tools, and they get very hot very fast, and you can't tell how hot they are just by looking at them. Oh, like an electric stove. They can be dangerous. Exactly. It's easy to burn yourself if you aren't sure what you're doing. Young people and beginners shouldn't be using a soldering iron without an experienced adult around. So how dost thou wield such a dangerous tool? First up, let's start with some basic safety gear. Such as? When solder is heated up quickly by a soldering iron, it can sometimes spit little drops of hot liquid called flux. And that's why it's important to wear a good pair of safety glasses. Yeah, gross, no spitting. When solder melts, it releases smoke that you definitely don't want to breathe. A fume extractor, like this one, uses a fan to suck that smoke into a filter so that you have clean, fresh air to breathe. Ah, that's much better. You should only hold a soldering iron by the handle and never touch the heating element. Yikes! No way! Total Burnsville! That's right, and because it's so hot, you can't just put down a soldering iron anywhere. You need to have a stand that can withstand the heat. Oh, like, like this one? Exactly. This soldering iron stand is made out of metal, so it doesn't burn, and it has a wide, flat base, so it won't tip over. So, a stand holds the iron. What holds the thing to soldering? That's where a vise comes in. This vise is designed to hold small circuit boards securely during soldering. All you do is slide the circuit board in and then tighten the jaws to hold it in place. Then you're ready to start working. What if you're soldering really big circuit boards? Well, for those, we've got really big vices for big boards. Whoa, it's a super vice. So once you have all the important safety gear taken care of, how do you, how do you start soldering? Well, now that we've got everything set up with our safety and our gear, doing the actual soldering is pretty simple. Step one, turn on the iron. Now wait for it to heat up. While it's heating up, place the component you want to solder onto the PCB. Place the PCB in your vise. Place the hot iron tip between the component lead and solder pad. Feed solder into joint, and voila! It's a miracle! Amazing! Wunderbar! Then clean the iron's tip using some brass wool or a damp sponge and place it back in the holder. Last but not least, don't forget to turn off your soldering iron. You make it look easy. Thanks! It's not that hard, but it does take a little bit of practice to get good at. Now remember, nobody here should be using the soldering iron without me here for supervision. Yeah, no sweat. Well, since you're here, maybe you could help us with this project. It's not too
too complicated. Yeah, it should only take a few hours. Oh no, what have I done? And special thanks to the entire team. Uh, we make all these here. The rule is you have to work at Adafruit to, to, to work on our, um, I think it was called Sesame Street 2.0 by Wired yeah, we, a long time ago. We don't have showrunners or yeah, so, agents. Uh, it's, all, Colin, it's all us. Colin, Jelly, Barney, Andrew, mm, Bren, um, Brennan, uh, you, me, Lieta, Colin, of course. Yeah, and uh, all the people that, that make Adafruit a place where we can do things like this. So this is meant for um, parents to hang out with their kids, much like um, the Muppet Show was meant for adults to hang out with kids. So they had both had something to do. Yeah. So these are all on YouTube, and uh, we hope to continue this series. We're up to S. There is A through Z, and we are on S Ooh, right now. We're getting there. Okay. Time travel. Let's uh, look around what happened in the last week or so. Um, there's this movie, Miracle on 34th Street, where, you know, instead of uh, the store paid Santa Claus telling you to shop just at that store, it was unheard of. Said go go to you know you need this thing go to this other store down the street and this that was, was that was like the basis of an entire movie <laughs> in the nineteen sixties. It's like what would you why would you do that? So um so anyways I, I tossed it into the machine uh, deep dream thing <laughs> and I made this like super insane uh, acid dream I like this. version. But um, the reason why I did this is because every single year we do something that's unheard of. Um, what we do is something called Ada deals and what we do is we email um, all of our friends frenemies competitors uh, partners best buds, whatever it is, we email them, we say, hey, we're going to do a bunch of sales. And we had Pinocchio, Modern Device, uh, we had uh, 2600, Pimeroni, Sphero, Hackspace Magazine, we had uh, Bantam, we had Electronic Cats, we had Particle, Solar Robotics, um, Micro Center, Pololu, Chibitronics, Parallax, Evil Mad Scientist Laboratory, Seed, Makey Makey, Tindy, I fix it, Arduino, SparkFun, and pretty much anyone who responded back to our email, and even if they didn't, we still even if they didn't, I looked for their sale to find it. And so the whole the title of it is here's stuff not from Adafruit during Black Friday Cyber Monday because there's lots of choices. We hope you purchase stuff with us, but we're not the only game in town. Um, also, of course, there's uh, did you wish, and I'll get to that in just a second. So that's not all in this week, this big time travel week. That was amazing. Giving Tuesday was yesterday. And Giving Tuesday, um, what, here's what we decided to do. So, you know, all year long, people who run websites and stuff like that, they're like, look at these numbers of users and, and look at the number of uniques and look at where how many social media likes we have and look yeah. at all these ads and followers. But they don't, there's only one day of the year that you really, maybe you could just like point and use that platform you spent all this time on to uh, give a voice or put a spotlight on a, on a group that could use some money or time or something i will say december a lot of nonprofits have matching donations it's a lot of them excellent do. time to and donate so what we did is we did a site takeover it was all about giving tuesday and so on our blog you can check this out no we stuck to ones in the techie space because you know it can go crazy and and that's one thing i wanted to mention too so adafruit gives paid time off for charity for our remote team members for our um, employees, and they can pick any 5013C, it has nothing to do with you and I like, and they can go and get paid from us to go work at a charity, because t money's nice, but you know what the most valuable thing is time. Mm. So um, all together with all the folks that we have, I think someone was doing the math, it's like 3,000 hours of charity work that just Adafruit can It's do. actually like one year's worth of work Yeah, altogether. and so, so one of the things, we talk to companies you know, I kind of do this in order, like Ada deals, like cool, yeah. we talk to all these companies. Always try to follow up and say, hey, look, maybe you can let your company do this too. What would it take to give your employees paid time off for charity? Um, so we did Giving Tuesday, and here's some of the places. This was uh, Digital Harbor Foundation. This was Girls Who Code. This was the Things Network New York. This was 4-H. It was the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The Raspberry Pi High Foundation is a charity. Not a lot of people know that because they sell boards. Well, the other part of it does, the trading company. EFF, Nation of Makers, Black Girls Code, and the Electronic Archive. And then the big one that we wanted to promote was Python and the Python Foundation. This is the first year that they did a uh, Giving Tuesday. And they do very focused yeah. grant giving 
to people to do specific, you know, to travel to events, yeah. to give talks, to hold events. It's very targeted and um, they're like so focused. It's great. I mean, there's always the big charities. But if you have a, a very specific interest and you want to yeah. get more people involved in Python, I feel like Python. That's a great way. To Python dot org slash donate. Mm. So, and if we covered it, we've done donations. Yeah. And that was important to us. But these are just some of them. And the other thing is, you know, it takes a little bit of time if you work at a company for like HR and handbooks to get updated. Ask. Just send a note to your, you know, start now. Send a note to the CEO. Send a note and just say, hey, what would it take for us to add paid time off for charity? Just ask. And say by next year. Yeah. Give yourself a year. Next up. Did you wish? 2019. This is a neat thing that DigiKey does. I'm a fan of it. Um, they don't pay us to say any of this stuff. We just no. pick stuff we like. I once entered and I didn't win. So and now I can't enter. So. You cannot enter because <laughs> yeah. we do partnerships with other stuff. But all you have to do is pick something from the DigiKey catalog. I think it's like 100 bucks or less. Follow them on social media. Put DigiWish, put the part number, and they pick someone each day. Hint, yeah. hint. DigiKey carries a lot of Adafruit stuff. So if you want free stuff from That's Adafruit, right. Here's Digi my wish suggestion. It from them. Go to digikey.com slash Python. By the way, Go DigiKey for having a Python on hardware section. DigiKey.com slash Python. Pick any of those things there and then just tweet at them or Instagram at them or Facebook at them and you can win. All right. We got gift guides. Um, we just started a new section on our site. It's adafruit.com slash explore. And we have gift guides, CircuitPython, Raspberry Pi, LEDs, machine learning, kits, young engineers, IoT, Adafruit IO, Circuit Playground Express, MakeCode Arcade, Feather Takes Flight, and um, a couple others, but these are the ones I wanted to focus on. So for that person who doesn't know or you don't know, like here's all the this things. This is the things. It's people yeah. like, I want to get something, and it's like we have a lot of cables and accessories, and you're like, what can I get that is like self-contained, it is what it is sort of things, rather than like, oh, I, you know, you don't realize you buy a sensor and then maybe you don't have a breakup board. All these are very self-contained items. Yeah. And these are our most popular, most loved gifts. Um, so we pick the best, the best. Yeah. We have a lot of items in the store. I know, it's like, there's like 4,000 items. Believe so me, I forget some We also do stuff. this because sometimes um, a kid will send this to their parents and say, this is what I want, and they can pick the one. So anyways, mm. um, help wanted. This is a like pre-announcement. So um, one of the things that we have is jobs.adafruit.com. Did you actually call this gerbs? <laughs> gerbs. It says gerbs. Yeah, it says gerbs. Um, <laughs> look, I have to name everything. This is a, this is, I'm like running like a news station over I here. I know, but normally it's just like, it's like a PID 41. That's a gerbs. Yeah. <laughs> I tell them about the gerbs. Gerbs.png. Um, we have a, we, we're going to post this up pretty soon, but I also wanted to give people a heads up who are super fans and watch our show. Um, Adafruit.io. The um, service that plays nice with all devices. Um, I think it's one of the most popular, if not the most popular, um, Internet of Things service for makers. Uh, we're going to be adding someone to our team. So if you know Rails and Node, um, look for a uh, job posting soon. Or just email me, PT at Adafruit. And if you want to work on something like Adafruit IO. Remote is welcome. Let, yeah, yeah, in fact, I would say um, the, the new normal now is not everyone wants to live in New York. Get it. We can always figure out If something. you do, that's cool. Don't, don't not apply if you're yeah. in New York, but remote, you can be Let me tell you the challenge. The so if, you were, if you live and work in New York, you have like three jobs. And it's like living in New York, yeah, dealing yeah. with their plumbing. Yeah. So, so if, you've ever, if you've ever seen that scene from Brazil, um, Lady and I have had, we live in an interesting apartment, and there's just always, the pipes are interesting. So um, we have, uh, you know, walls that they open up and they take the pipes out and I think Robert De Niro is going to swing in at some point. Yeah, I hope and say, so. We're in it together. But anyways, the job is for Adafruit IO, and if you know Rails and it's a lot of back end development. It's yeah. it's to I mean Adafruit IO runs. It's, it's solid, very stable. It, has, it doesn't crash. We want to add more, right? Yeah. Like everybody wants to add more. So especially if you've used IoT stuff and you have a you know you don't have to have a passion for it, but if you do, of course that helps. Um, we use MQTT and REST. Security is really important to us. Yeah. Um, but it's mostly Rails and Node.js. My suggestion is if you have Rails and Node experience, just get a device and just play around with Adafruit IO and just see the, the work that's gone into it. So yeah. anyways, we'll have that up soon, but I want to give okay. everyone a preview. Yep. All right. And well, that was time travel. Okay. We're an open source hardware company and um, there is something really special going on in the world of open source. Like what? <laughs> well, this combines all the things I like. Yeah. So there's Feather, there's Hackaday, there's just Adafruit, like there's DigiKey. Eagle, there's an Eagle thing. There's, I like Eagle things. I would say... Uh, it's like a cyber eagle. Yeah. Um, it's like a cyber cockatoo. It's the Feather Takes Flight Contest. And there's like 46 or 48 entries already. Yeah. And this is from Hackaday.io. 
And uh, these entries are amazing. And Seed Studio came in. They're going to um, contribute gonna some out. stuff. Yeah, so this Did is Did help in? So these are all the designs already. So we have lots of different categories. It'll be judged on. Can it be manufactured? But just take a look. These are these are them already. Um, I emailed uh, Sophie. Shout out Sophie. And I said, hey, how, what order is these coming? Because I wanted to make sure I didn't like make it unfair. They come in randomly, which is the most fair thing. Great. Um, so anyways, this is... The and there's a lot of categories. So yeah. even if you're like, oh my goodness, so like the open book, how can make I make something complicated? Don't worry, there's it, enter. You know, it's free to enter. You don't have to. You don't actually have to design hardware. You can actually just you know draw what you think you want, and you never know. Maybe you'll win. Yeah. All right, um, lady. There are two thousand and sixty-seven guides on learn.adafruit.com. What yes. was on the big board this week? Was the luminary from last week? The know. luminaries were yeah. last week, and the cyberpunk Santa I was okay. last week, and understanding USB is last week. You got to do Gizmo up. Okay. Gizmo. Up. So okay. yeah, we got a bunch of circuit playground projects this week. Uh, we've got the circuit playground Gizmo ornaments, three different designs: one for the e ink Gizmo, one for the TFT Gizmo, and one for no Gizmo, just LEDs. These three D print um, ornaments are just—they're so cute and they fit perfectly. You can put the battery inside and then remotely control your uh, blue fruit uh, with our app or send an image to, um, like if you have a cute dog, you can send the image to the TFT Gizmo. So check that out, that's from Noe and Pedro. Uh, we also have a guide for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Tricolor Ink Gizmo. So uh, we have the TFT Gizmo, people like it. Maybe they also like the Ink Gizmo, so they, the display um, doesn't use any power when it's not being updated. And it's also daylight visible. Um, we have Arduino and CircuitPython code with some examples on showing bitmaps and drawing arbitrary things. We have the guide that goes with the video we did last month or so, All the Internet of Things, Episode 5, The S and IoTs for Security. So this is a script and graphics that goes along with that video. Um, we slice up the video so you can do it piece by piece. Uh, I really like to read, um, not just watch videos, so we have both the guide version uh, that goes with the video. You can watch either or, or both at the same time. Follow along. It's basically the same script. We have a guide uh, from Catney on ultra and uh, yeah, from Catney on ultrasonic uh, sonar distance sensors, uh, particularly for use with Circuit Python. Although we'll add in Python, we'll use uh, at Arduino later. If you're using a Raspberry Pi or a Featherboard or Circuit Python, you want to use one of the many ultrasonic uh, distance sensors, the low cost ones. We now have a guide showing you how to do that with wiring diagrams. Some are five volt sensitive, some are, you know, you are only. So there's a couple options. We kind of go through everything, explain them. And then uh, finally, we have that new guide from JP, the Blue Fruit Playground Hide and Seek. Um, we showed the little video where um, the seeker gets closer to the treasures, it changes color, and the LEDs get brighter. Uh, so you know that you're getting close to the treasure. So uh, scatter these all over the house or over the farm, whatever. Send the kids out. You don't have to deal with them for about an hour. Think about how great that would be. Treasure hunt, scavenger hunt. And that's the guides. All right, we'll have more soon. We're a factory in New York City. We have footage to prove it. Here we go.
outside our window. This is what the pick and place sees. Um, there's lots of construction in the area. So, uh, Good launches building and demolish and Sunil. Yeah. He takes them out. Some comes in. So we got a little bit of snow here in New York. It was like 60 degrees, and then all of a sudden it did turn. It snowed, and that's all gone. Yeah, it's but nice you, can for a see, day. you can see little pieces of the building getting chopped away there. Yeah. So. Soon it'll be, you'll see it'll be empty. Yeah, and then they'll build some big. Yep. There you go. Bye. Bye, uh, roof. Bye, everybody. Gone. Um, all right, so we got some 3D printing. Yep. So let's uh, play the video. This is um, that ornament that you talked about from the guides. Yes, take it's it away. No way. Hey, what's up, folks? In this project, we're making an assortment of 3D printed ornaments. We have one that uses the TFT gizmo for displaying images. We also made a version for the e-ink gizmo for displaying tricolor graphics. We also made a light-up version just for the circuit playground. The TFT gizmo features an IPS display and it pairs nicely with the circuit playground Bluefruit. Using the Bluefruit app, we can beam images from a device like an iPhone, so we can easily load images from our photo library. Both the e-ink gizmo and TFT gizmo are designed to work with the circuit playground Bluefruit. With the e-ink gizmo, the image stays on even when the power is off. The display is really high contrast and even readable in daylight. The 3D printed parts snap fit together and secure the PCBs without any glue or screws. It has a modular design so we can easily swap out the front cover. Our circuit playground ornament features a built-in slide switch so you can power it on and off. It's got a twist top so you can change it out for different designs. With the Bluefruit app, you can use the control pad to trigger different animations. You can also use the color picker to change the color and brightness of the NeoPixels. We've made a number of different faceplates, but you could also design your own. The latest version of CircuitPython has really nice Bluetooth support. Go to circuitpython.org and check out all of the supported hardware. You can search for the Circuit Playground Bluefruit and download the latest version. Double press the reset button to get into the bootloader mode. You can install CircuitPython by dragging and dropping the U2 file onto the USB drive. With CircuitPython, you can quickly get your projects up and running. For wireless image transfer over Bluetooth, be sure to check out the Learn Guide. The Learn Guide for the TFT Gizmo has a quick start for using it with CircuitPython. We also have a quick start guide for the e-ink displays with ready-to-go Python code. If you have any projects you'd like to share, we invite you to Adafruit Show & Tell livestream. Definitely hit up Adafruit's Discord server so you can chat with the community. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you have a festive maker holiday. Don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. So the Cybertruck came out and you're thinking you have to wait a long time? No. No. You can print one now. I always wanted a mini Cybertruck. will not be on for the rest of the year. There'll be some videos and more from Noe, but one of the reasons, and Pedro said it was okay to post, welcome to the world, Declan. This is Pedro's son. So there is now Ruse Brothers part two. <laughs>
because part four. Yeah. So part, this is mm. yeah. So congratulations, Pedro and family. What on this a wonderful bundle of Christmas. joy. So there was a turkey. Leave. There was a turkey in the oven, but it wasn't turkey. Yeah. <laughs> so Pedro will be on paternity leave, so you won't see them um, around as much as over the next few weeks. But uh, happy, healthy wishes to the entire family and more. What a cool. Uh, life that this kid is going to see just because no one, Pedro and the entire family is always making and doing things. That kid is a lucky kid and they are lucky to have this kid. Welcome to Declan. Okay, um, Lady Ada. Yeah. We have um, a code that I'm going to do before the new products. Time for USB-C is the code. Time yes. for the store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Let's uh, let's do this. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, first up, so if you uh, don't get anything and then you're just like, oh no, I forgot, don't worry, we have gift certificates, just check them out on Adafruit. You can print out these cool graphics and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to mention this each week all the way up to like the 25th-ish, um, but we do have gift certificates. People always have, but do you have to receive gift certificates? Yes, we do. We do. Okay. All right, turn off. We just have some more wick. I don't have solder wick, and this is just uh, some thinner wick. Uh, it comes, this is about uh, one millimeter wide, comes in a roll about one and a half meters long, like five feet. Uh, it's low cost, easy to use, great for reworking along with a solder sucker. These are perfect for fixing up your mistakes. All right, next up. Next up, these are our classic box speakers. They're four ohm, one, it's four, four ohm, three watts. So they're nice and strong. They've got mounting holes, which I love. They're boxed, they have a pretty good sound and they don't you know, get damaged too easily. And there's two wires coming at the end and uh, usually we have them with a JST connector on the end. This time they have bare stripped wire uh, that's tinned. Uh, so great for just plugging into, we have a couple boards that just have terminal blocks. You just slot these right in and boom, you make an audio. All right, toss them over the overhead just so we can see what they're like under, with a human hand. Yes, so this is a speaker. So this yeah. is four ohm, three watts. It's a box, mounting holes, and then here are the stripped wires. All right, next up. Glitter, it's snowing outside, so why not bring the snow inside? So we wanted to um, show making some snow globe projects with some cool festive glitter. These are actually like, I think used for nail art, but they're so cool. I gotta show these yeah. on the overhead because still images don't do them justice. So these are like super like cybery, glittery. And then I think actually I'm gonna even plug in, I've got this, uh, I got the ring light I'm going to show later, but this, like, oh, so cool. So they have like a beautiful shimmery effect. And then uh, you can uh, fill your snow globe with them and you've got snow. So you, you're you better at twisting it, but you want to give it a twist because you're, you got the right wrist motion. I guess so. Yeah, there you go. Make yeah. Make flutter. I don't know, it's tough. But um, you twist it and then the, yeah. the little glitters kind of go everywhere and shimmer beautifully and it's like why are you making this bright light so um you get like it's like approximately 300 oh my god it's Can you turn the light off yeah i think it's also the glittering effect is confusing it but uh they're just like little skinny glitters you can also use them to decorate stuff but um you just get a little tin here a plastic uh screw top i'll never fit these back in if you drop some it's okay because there's a lot glitter that's that okay Next up. This ring light, which I was just showing that was so bright, the camera got confused. So these are actually used for microscope lights. And we actually just like the ring light part. Um, it basically, you give it nine volts and it gives you this very nice diffused, neutral, you know, white color. Um, let me show it on the overhead. You can also take it apart if you like it, but it does come with a nice protective uh, metal case. So inside are like a couple hundred like little 0603 LEDs. It's got a 2.1 millimeter DC jack on the end. Uh, I plug it in, it's gonna freak out. It's incredibly bright, um, but it's very even, which is nice and it gives you uh, shadowless uh, lighting effects. So, you know, sometimes people use it on microphones, uh, microscopes, sometimes people use these on cameras or video lights, but it's just a great little ring light. Um, doesn't have a dimmer because the dimmer wasn't that great. So we decided to not stock the dimmer, but you can dim it yourself with a PWM signal. I thought this would be more for DIY projects because you can always just 
you know, buy ring lights if you want, but uh, just getting the ring light element, I thought would be handy for like costuming or science projects, or I don't know, just something neat. So ring lights. Okay, next up. Ooh, then we got the BitBot. So this is a um, little robot that you can build for a micro bit. And it's called the Pi Buggy, I think. Let me get the name right, because it's on the inside. But it's, uh, I think the Pi Buggy. And you, uh, it's solderless. It comes with um, two continuous rotation servos on the side. It bolts on the front here. It maybe uses like those SMT standoffs, which I love. It's got uh, two NeoPixels on the bottom, uh, kind of a classic uh, ball uh, caster. And uh, you can program it with your micro bit or you can control it remotely. You can code it in uh, make code. Probably also you can code it up in uh, uh, MicroPython. But we got a little, we have just doing a little square square dance. But it's, it's cute and it's fairly low cost. So it's not like, you know, if you're going to buy a $17 micro bit, you don't want to spend 50 bucks for the robot. So check it out. It's a really cute little... Uh, BitBot takes about a half an hour, maybe an hour to build if you don't have a lot of experience with um, putting stuff together. But it's an easy build. Start the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, and our community. USB-C is here. Well, we've been actually using USB-C in a couple boards. We're still in the transition period, so you're going to see maybe one or two more boards with Micro-B as we transition to USB-C. But USB-C, we have a guide on it. Uh, it's great because it's reversible. It can handle high currents. Can handle high voltages. Um, it's very strong, and also um, modern computers are all kind of coming with USB C ports. So uh, we wanted to put in the store a 10 pack of the connectors that we use because folks have been asking about them because these are very nice low cost connectors that are basically, they're not designed for like display port users of Thunderbolt. They're like, okay, you just want USB data and power. You can see it here with our STM32 uh, F405 Feather, which is the first board we use USB-C with, um, other than just like a simple breakout. Um, and uh, let me grab a USB-C connector so I can... Yeah, and by the way, we have a um, huge guide on learn.adafruit.com all about USB-C. We looked for some type of resource out there yeah. and couldn't find one. So, um, and we also have an article coming out in 2600 soon yeah. about USB-C, but there's things like alternate mode and the length of the cable matters and the different types. And there's 3.2, Rev2, Gen2. Um, there's a lot of weird things with USB-C. So um, check out the guide too, yes. because there's some cables that if you're powering like a laptop or monitor, you have to be very specific and there's markings you need to look for. So we, we help demystify that. Um, but in addition to that, there's a lot that goes into the, the hardware to make all this work. Yeah. So what's nice about these cables is they're reversible. They click nicely. They're strong. Um, but these connectors only have one row of pins, so they're easier to rework. And it also makes them a little bit lower cost uh, than the ones that have, like, every pin exposed, which for most people you don't need. Uh, unless you're, if you're doing DisplayPort or Thunderbolt, you can afford more than, like, you know, a dollar for a connector. These also have through-hole pads. And uh, surface mount, so you can pick and place them. Um, you pick them up, you place them, or you place them by hand. They've got two positioning dots. They've got um, the pads on the end here. I think it's like 16 or so different connectors. Uh, and then these four through hole pads, they go through the PCB and they make it um, mechanically strong. So if you plug it in, because it is, this is an anchor point, they don't snap. I mean, if I really tried, I'd probably tear the PCB in half. But uh, they're pretty strong and they don't really move anywhere and they, they are defended against shear and, and pulling force. So uh, if you'd like to use these, we may have a pack of 10 of these connectors. Uh, these are loose, but they'll come in a, a tape when you get them. And that's USB-C connectors. Okay, and with that, Lady Ada is? Yes. Wanna recap? Yeah, let's recap. New, 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 new. Gift certificates, get them if you forget to get someone something. That's very succinct. Uh, we have solder wick in a thinner option, now about one millimeter wide. We have a four ohm, three watt speaker in a box to really like with mounting holes, and it's got tinned and stripped wires at the end for easy terminal block usage. This uh, snowflake glitter 
It is great for making snow globes, decorating your project. They kind of have this beautiful shimmery effect. They're so cool. This ring light is uh, intended for use with the microscope, but I think you guys are gonna come up with something cooler for it. Give it nine volts. It gives you incredibly bright, but even lighting all the way around. This bit buggy, uh, put it together and plug on your micro bit. Uh, no soldering required, and you can make a remote controlled or programmable robot. Comes with tools even. And a 10 pack of USB-C connectors. We like these connectors. They're easy, they're fairly low cost. They're half through hole, half surface mount. They're kind of the nice USB-C connectors. We recommend them. People have asked where we got them from, and now we have them in the shop. Half through hole, half surface mount, half bare. All USB-C. <laughs> Cool. So whatever you saw that you want to put into your cart and save a buck or two or, two or more, um, that's a code. It'll go until uh, I turn it off, which is usually around midnight. Um, let's do some top secret. Okay. All right. So top secret, we've got a couple things. First up, let's show some MP3 playing with CircuitPython. Okay. You do that while I get my demo. Okay, Lady Data, what is this? Hi, everybody. I'm testing out a new pull request to add native MP3 decoding to CircuitPython so it can play native MP3 files without a decoder chip. You want to try it out? Let's try this out. Okay. So this is with I2S output going to our I2S amplifier to a 4-ohm speaker. It's playing music. And uh, working on getting this, working on the SAMD51 as well, and the STM32, and maybe even playing more than one MP3 file at a time. So that'll be really fun. So you can play all sorts of compressed audio as well as wave on CircuitPython. All on CircuitPython. So easy. All on a feather like thing. Cool. Yeah, this is the code. This is it. It's like three lines. Open the file, play the file, wait till the file's done. All right, next up, this is a preview of the new version of our app called Blue Fruit Playground. And when you start it up, it has a very nice animation. That's a nice animation. Shows the thing that you're going to do. Power up. You should plug this thing in. Discover. Anyone wants to find this thing with you. So um, this was a test for me. I'll tell you why I made this video. I'm just like, you know what, let me just see if I can get my audio and video thing because I need to record off the phone. And I also want to show this at the same time. And uh, I'm just like, well, let me just try this out. I didn't plan on showing the video to anyone. And after I was finished, I'm like, this is kind of fun. So um, you can choose different modes. This is NeoPixels. And we're going to add more functionality and everything. This is to get everybody started instantly, immediately. What can you do with this thing within seconds? Mm. And we have a lot of surprises coming up ahead. We think we've solved some of the things that's always hard for people to do with Bluetooth and electronics. Um, we also get to use different modules and modes because of all the things that are packed into a circuit playground blue fruit. I like the button status thing. This is kind of cool. Button. Press button. button and button. it knows that you're doing this. Yeah. It's all wireless. It's like instant. All live. Um, this was even an older revision of the board that I had sent around. And... Uh, Get tone generation. Want to play music? Look <laughs> at the speaker symbol. Like, boop, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Accelerometer. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, this is all with a mobile device because everyone has a computer. Maybe this is how you're going to interact with these things. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, we're heating it up. Yeah. All right. So next up in our top secrets, we have a thermal camera. Um, from our oh, machine yeah. learning stem time that we were doing. So let's uh, let's show that. Hey, Nita, what is this? Hey, it's me and you. We're yeah. warm. This is the MLX90640 camera that I'm trying out this time with Raspberry Pi. I go to Pure Python driver for it. It's working pretty fast, getting about 15, 16 frames a second. Yay. And uh, I'm doing interpolation with Pillow and then some gradient work, and you can see us, we're kind of warm, and, and your camera's really warm too. And then if I stick the camera down towards the pie, you can see the pie is nice and toasty. So we think this is going to be useful for machine learning because there's already a camera interface, but 
Sometimes you want to do thermal detection or maybe nighttime detection. So these little thermal cameras give you pretty good output. And I think we could train up a model to detect maybe people okay. thermally. So cool. uh, yeah, alien vision. Okay, and you have a demo. Yeah. I've got a uh, upcoming e-ink, whoops, go the other way, e-ink feather friend. You can plug e-ink displays into it. I also have this extension cable that we're going to get. And uh, just by special request from Scott, who wanted to be able to quickly test out new e-ink displays, you can plug them in, gets you SD card, does have power stuff, gives you some SRAM, and then uh, you can cable up your favorite e-ink display and, and display quotes or whatever on any display you like. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and that is top secret. That's correct. Okay, we're going to answer some questions in the chat. We yes. We do that at adafruit.it slash discord. And slash discord. And we're going to answer questions. So I'm going to answer them now. Yes. Um, Jan K was asking about, um, so on one of our videos, there is a link to Teespring, and it's a um, Circuit Python 3 um, uh, poster that you can buy. Yeah. And it was like, hey, what's up with that? So here's the thing. So YouTube, they visited and they said that, oh, yeah, you'll be able to put Adafruit products underneath your videos. I'm just like, that's great. And they're like, oh, we, yeah, we're all about doing that now. Yeah. And then um, they, they changed their mind, and uh, the only thing that we could put there was this sample thing that I had to make. To see yeah. to see how this would work out, so I don't even know how to get it off. So <laughs> I think it's there forever. But anyways, um, welcome you know, to Google. Yeah. So there's a little bit of switcheroos sometimes. So okay. Uh, next up, can you have PCP pads that have solder mask on it as a button for cap touch for the Feather M0 Express? Any other PCB design considerations for cap touch? Yeah. There's people who you'll just you know if you look at for example the Pi ruler, we have uh, four cap touch buttons that are integrated into the ruler. So look at that to get some inspiration. Um, oh, the blue wires on that demo, that was because that was like one of the first ones. It was ones. a beta, yeah. and I had the wrong crystal package, so I had yeah. to solder by hand, so, but it works. Yeah. And then I gave it to her, I was like, hey, Phil, you want I it? just use it for stuff yeah. like that. Um, Mega Mix had a question earlier, and I wanted to get to that. I uh, wanted to know about starting an electronics company Mm -hmm. in New Orleans. I want to set up an electronics business in New Orleans, but most places only make devices for other stuff. No ideas where I could start. Maybe you should register it. Well, one thing I would say is, yeah, go to your local library and maybe look at the NOLO books. Um, go to the city hall and look at the process. There's very, uh, usually bored people there that want to help you. And look at what it's like registering a company name. But the thing I'd say is, if you're going to do electronics, start with making something and putting it on Tindy. Mm. Because you'll go and you'll discover all of the things. Just put one thing up there. Yeah. Because it's like, where does your address? Oh, yeah, like, I'm not here all the time. Like, what is your... How do you like, ship things? Yeah, how do how you do things support? Shipping. How are you yeah. going to accept a form of payment? Mm, and these are very complicated. Yeah. It, well, it is and it isn't. Like, yeah. But you, you know, have to learn how to do it if you yeah, don't know how. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, you know, as far as our in our international audience, the, the U.S. does make it easy to start a business. You know, you can just... Go down, register your name. You can do pretty simple things with an accountant that don't cost that much. So anyways, okay. Uh, someone wants to know about the ITSY NRF 52840. We just got PCBs recently, so okay. soonish. No ETA. Uh, would we update the Feather Fona to work with CircuitPython? Well, the Feather Fona is the 32U4, so it can't. There's an open issue in CircuitPython to add like a cellular stack. I think that, um, didn't Hologram add a cellular demo? I mean, I guess I'd go to the, the CircuitPython issue about the Fona and you can subscribe to that because it's something that we're looking at, but probably not until next year. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 I think I'll let folks know, uh, you can keep asking questions. We're going to go and uh, give, give something, something away. Yeah, I'm going to start on that. So what do you want to give away this week? I thought we'd give away... Uh, let's give away this ring light. That's kind of cool. Kinda That's kinda cool. Nice. Okay, what are the rules? Um, the first person to call the phone number that when it appears uh, will be the winner. You're going to call this phone here. It's holding it up here. here whatever, you can't see it. And uh, it's going to ring twice. And then I'm going to pick it up and say, Ahoy, Ahoy. 
-hmm. and that's how you know it's me. And uh, maybe, maybe say a hoy hoy back. Are you gonna put it underneath? The oh thing, yeah, or sorry. It's it? moving. I'm gonna look. I'm just doing stuff. It's right okay. here, phone. And then um, I'm gonna ask you where you're calling from and your name, and a project you're working on or you want to work on. And if you can answer all that, you'll win this cool nine volt ring light that you can do something neat with. Yeah. I don't know what yet. Sometimes we put stuff in the store that I'm like, I don't know what this is good for, but it's cool. That's how it goes. Okay. That's life. All right, so you just have to call the number. Okay. The lines are open. Call this number if you haven't entered in one before. Oh. Yeah, you have to, if you won before, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep throwing questions. Calling it to um, win it. Would you do a, a feather wing with the uh, NRF9160? Um, we thought about it, but actually there's a company that makes a feather with that chip, and it, it's... It's very advanced and it doesn't have native USB, so it's not a high priority for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very cool chip, but I don't, I don't think people are quite ready for an all-in-one programmable cellular. That's, that's mm -hmm. going to be a challenge to people. They're not ready for it yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, what's the? You got a new keyboard? I did because my wrists are hurting too much, so I got a Kinesis, or Kinesis. I don't know keyboard. Mm. Okay. Well, let's see if anyone's... Oh! No. It's the say, phone. I, you know, I always forget the, about the lag that's on here. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Phone. Ring twice. Okay, pick it up. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Hi, oh, ahoy, ahoy. Hi. Congratulations. You've called in to Ask an Engineer, and you are going to win a prize. What's your name and where you're calling from? Kelly Jackson from Reno, Nevada. All right, Jackson from Nevada. Well, congratulations. You've won a fabulous ring light. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com, and say it's Jackson from Nevada, and I'd like to uh, get my P, uh, PID 4433. That's product number 4433, and they'll send you out immediately. Okay. Awesome. Great. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Um, I was going to make a Larson scanner for next uh, Halloween. A Larson scanner? That's a great idea. Start now. You'll be larsening in no time. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks, thanks for calling in. Congratulations. Don't forget to email support Adafruit to claim your prize. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. All right. Cool. Okay. Giving away. Congratulations. Well, that's our show for tonight, everybody. Um, one more question that came in. Um, there's some stuff out of stock. We just had the biggest sales day of the year. So anything, just sign up and you'll get an email notification the second it's there. I promise you one of the things we are going to yeah. make tons and tons of is anything Bluetooth. The circuit, yeah, we're definitely going to make more circuit playground Bluetooth. They actually just keep selling out. We are, we're putting them in stock every few days yeah. and they sell through and we're just, we're just trying to keep up with the demand. It's one of those things where this is the busiest season but it's also the season where a lot of people take holiday breaks so it's a little bit of a balancing game we want to make sure that yeah we don't over yeah we also, and also like worldwide supply chain stuff so we don't do anything like ship things uh that aren't ready you know has to be yeah. tested we also only ship things we have we don't do back orders yeah because that would disappoint everyone also the globe yeah. is underwater on fire at any moment so it's hard to predict where chips are going to be on planet or sometimes so also anyways checkdigikey.com they have a lot of stuff of ours in stock yeah. so if we don't have it check digikey um the circuit playground that goes out with the, the 299 dollar shipping it's the express yeah with the free shipping is the express the blue fruits we just got out of alpha not quite ready to yeah. unleash it uh, but i'll say this but maybe i'll say this one of the goals uh, as soon as possible is to uh, swap out the circuit playground express um, on the freebies and like everyone just gets blue fruits because you're gonna use lots of these together yeah so who cares if you get a few yeah yeah it's cool okay the more the merrier um the playground express is the round one yeah that's right yes okay that's our show right. for night everyone thanks everybody we'll see you every uh we'll see you every wednesday forever um special thanks to all the adafruit team members out there all of our adafruit community members all the folks in discord all the people that help run things behind the scenes tonight and the chat is Jesse May and and or Kelly, I think they're they're both they're both in Slack right thanks, now. Thanks, Jesse May. Thank you, thanks, Kelly, for helping out and uh, special thanks to them for the gift guide help too. Um, we will see you all next week. Um, we have a guest, don't forget, and then after that is AdaBox unboxing with JP, and then yeah. we'll figure out the shows for the rest of the year. 
code till midnight. Use it. Time for USB-C. Here's your moment of Zener. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Bye, night. Bye, everybody.